All right, so from all these common injuries here that we see in sport, everything from plantar fasciitis to lower leg fractures, ankle sprains, everything in between, there are some common factors or variables that we can point to um, that in some capacities are attributable to all of these things. So if we take a quick look at the anatomy image here, we can see there's just a lot going on. There's a lot of different structures running in a lot of different directions. And whenever you see a, a lot of muscle or connective tissue or structures in general in a small surface area, um, such as the foot, that should make you think that everything has a very specific and kind of refined role. And we need each of these little pieces and parts to all come together and function globally. So beyond that, what we can look to for kind of being quote unquote red flags for increasing the likelihood of a foot or a lower leg injury, the first is rapid changes in workload or demand. So when you go from doing not a lot or just a little bit to rapidly doing a lot, the feet, the ankles, the lower legs become very vulnerable to this. So you want to do your best to try to gradually ramp your way up to things like training camp and the starts of seasons or the change of sports for those of you in high school. In addition to that, poor sensory motor function. So the bottom of the foot has more proprioceptive and sensory motory bodies than the retina of the eyes. It's the most concentrated area of proprioception throughout the body. So what that means is that there's a great demand for being able to kind of sense and detect from the bottom of the foot where the body is, how the body is positioned and pressured and, and so on and so forth. So if we have poor sensory motor function, that's going to dampen our ability um, to activate muscles and to prepare ourselves for ground contact and cutting. The way I always look at it is the better our opportunity is to detect, the greater our chance is to respond. Weak intrinsic foot muscles and lacking foot compliance kind of have um, some overlap here, but intrinsic foot muscles are these small muscles that run between the base of, or between the toes and um, kind of throughout the midfoot and the base of the foot. So with these intrinsic muscles, these are primarily responsible for helping the foot to splay and open um, and basically absorb and dissipate ground contact forces and being able to do so at a very efficient uh, rate. So if we don't have good intrinsic muscles, every time our foot strikes the ground, it basically sends like shock waves up the leg. And that's what can contribute to things like, again, fasciitis, turf toe, but in particular here, shin splints, which is very common in early football phases. Limited big toe extension, loss of ankle range of motion, so just general mobility, and again, compliance or the ability to kind of contort the foot in position uh, based on different uh, cutting actions or different demands of sport. You want to have good uh, dexterity and mobility throughout the foot. So being able to bend through that big toe is very important for sprinting, for cutting, being able to create tension through the arches. Um, is, is basically, you know, dependent on the ability to extend that toe. And then again, with compliance being comfortable on the outside border of your foot, inside border, forefoot, midfoot, and heel, you should be able to, you know, maneuver through those pretty well. You know, if the calf is too tight or too weak, it basically just compromises the support for the foot, um, where these are intrinsic foot muscles here, the calf muscles and these up, uh, lower leg muscles are considered to be our extrinsic uh, foot muscles. So these have an equally important role for supporting uh, the foot and for general foot function. Now, lastly, for uh, the common factors, you know, if we have a lot of work over a short period of time, there's a greater demand for these structures. They get fatigued. Things start getting crampy. Um, that's really when injury vulnerability increases. Uh, joints become susceptible. Bones become more susceptible. We lose our ability to detect and respond. So monitoring your volume, monitoring your ground contacts throughout the week, especially multi-sport athletes that are doubling up, um, just make sure that there is intermittent rest throughout that. Uh, otherwise, eventually, you're just going to run into problems.